Well, hi everyone. It's Theological Thursday. Boy, these weeks roll around quickly, don't they? They sure do. Hey, and here we are. As you can see, we're in the reception area of the uh, of the church. What do you think of all of these um, renovations going on? Amazing. Yeah, it looks really cool. looks great. Yeah, it sure does. It's, it's going to be great when it's finished. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Dr. Dave and I did ask you guys to tell us any questions you might have or ask us any questions you might have. And sure enough, it's, it's burning on everyone's lips. Everyone wants to know. And I'll tell you why. Because when you read some of the, uh, the end times and the, the, um, uh, the prophecies in the Bible regarding um, you know, end time stuff, we've had a lot, of, a lot of teaching. There's a lot of stuff floating around. And unfortunately... Much of it is not by theologians. They're just by people like yourselves who may not have even been to Bible college and you read a part of the Bible and, and you think, oh, that could be this, it could be that. And, uh, and uh, a classic we'll talk about later is, uh, is Timothy LaHaye, um, who's you know, written a bunch of books called Left Behind. They even made a movie out of it. But um, we had a question after last week's session um, and we have had a couple of questions, but one of them was, um, uh, you know, what's this, the deal with the one world government? I've heard that thrown around. And Dr. Dave, I've got to tell you, I heard that a lot when I was growing up. There was a man named Barry Smith, and, uh, and he wrote a book called Warning, and then he wrote another one called Second, Second Warning, Warning. Yeah. <laughs> and then another one, number three, Third Warning. And, uh, and he said, he said, you will look, you know, in, in, in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, um, we're going to read that actually. Uh, in Revelation chapter 13, um, you know, it talks about this coalition of nations that's going to rise up and it's going to be led by the Antichrist. And my, my dad used to always say that has to be the European economic community. I had that too. Yeah. The European, because back then, they had 10 members, there were only 10 nations. And then when it got a, a couple over that, my dad said, oh, well, uh, he was a good prophet. He said England will leave. Well, well they, he got that yeah, one right eventually, but um, there's a lot more than 10 now. Yeah, there's over 20 now. Uh, and so they're not going to be amputating all the toes. So let's have a look at the passage in question because there was another question that sprung out of this same same chapter, Revelation chapter 13, and it was about the number of, of the beast, the mark of the beast, number 666. But let's just read this passage that's in question for a start. Here we go. Uh, this is from Revelation 13. Then I stood on the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rising out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his ten horns, ten crowns, and on his heads, a blasphemous name. I'm reading from the King James Version here. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard with feet that were like the feet of a bear, and his mouth was like the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power, his throne and his great authority. And I saw one of these heads as if it had been mortally wounded and his deadly wound was healed. All the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon and gave authority, sorry, who gave authority to the beast and they worshipped the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority to continue for 42 months. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle and, and um, those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And the authority was given over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell in the, in the earth will worship him whose names have not been written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the, earth, of the world. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And then he says, Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb, and it spoke like a dragon. It exercises all the authority of the first beast. Yada, yada, yada. And it goes down. And at the end, in verse uh, 18, he said, or verse 16 and 17, he, said, he causes all, this is that, that beast, all both small and great, rich and poor, slave and free, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads. And there is that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. It's the number of a man. I wonder which man. His number is... 
666. Tell you something really interesting about that. Um, well, a couple of things. Firstly, it was written primarily in code to Jewish believers. Yep. Okay, we, we have to understand that. Um, but one of the things that's interesting, because it was written to Jewish believers, it was written in Greek, which yep. we understand that, but the number 666 was actually written in Hebrew text. So okay, in the middle so, of the Greek. So we just read that there, there's this one little portion of that whole passage that's written in a different language, and it tells you it's to calculate a, it. It's a riddle. It's it's a, a, and it says calculate it if you have to have, yeah, it's a riddle, you have to have wisdom. It actually explains that. You know, it's not like it's keeping that a secret. It's saying this is a riddle, figure it out, and it's, a, it's the number of a man. So is it the Pope? No, the, the number... The number um, was written, as I said, in, in Hebrew, and you, you've got to understand that each Hebrew letter also carries a numeric value. Yes. Um, and when you break down the, that, that number um, to, to get to 666, you actually get the, uh, the name of, of Nero um, come out of it, uh, of Nero how, Caesar. How so? Um, well, it, it, was, it was written, um, as I said, in, in Hebrew, in, that number was written in Hebrew, yeah. um, and it comes out Neron Caesar, which is um, Caesar Nero. Yep, yeah, Caesar Nero. So that's the number of the man. And interestingly, um, you couldn't buy or sell without without his mark. You know that that was on the coin. He had his face on the coin. You couldn't buy or sell without using Roman currency. There you go. So the mark is simply the name of Caesar. Because I I remember as a kid being told that the Pope has a hat and on that hat is some Latin numerals and if you add them up and you have to skip a few and you have to drop a few, but if you add up things just right, you'll come to 666. Well, uh, I'm not going to uh, argue with, with that for or against it, but um, I, I will say just purely out of interest, uh, Ficario Philly Day is the, uh, the title that the Pope wears, mm -hmm. Ficario Philly Day, Vicar of the Son of God. Um, and Ficario translates into uh, Greek as anti, um, and Philidae, son of God, is Christ. Um, so if, if he wants to give himself that title, he can have it, but that's not really what Revelation was talking about. No, it's Revelation not. Revelation was talking about Nero. No, and so, so let's then, so if the mark of the beast is actually uh, the, or the number of the beast re is talking about Caesar Nero, um, who was the sixth Caesar uh, in the dynasty at that at that stage. Um, and how do you not? You can't buy or sell without it. So that's are you just saying the currency of the day across the world was Nero's currency yeah. with his with and, his head on it. And as we said last time, um, as soon as you say it, it's to be on the forehead and the back of the hand. Jewish people understood that straight away. Yeah. Um, that was yeah. the thinking and action. Yes. So if you're not aware, we did mention that last week, but, um, you know, one of the laws in the Old Testament was to, you know, write them on, uh, you know, write them on your hand and your head, in other words. And, the, and some people, the Orthodox Jews still to this day, yeah. have a little the little box called a phylactery. And, and in it is little scriptures that they, they roll up and put in the little box and they, they strap it to their head. You might see that when Orthodox Jewish people and on their hands. And that was what that was referring to. That same passage, Dave, um, from Revelation 13, speaks of a beast. Now, much has been made of this, this beast because we know from Revelation 17 that it is a, that they're, they're kings. It says yeah, these are the, the seven heads are seven kings and the ten horns are ten kings. And, and so it's, it's quite, um, you know, figurative language. It's painting a picture. Um, what is, I mean, again, I was told as a kid that this is, and you, you heard, you know, this is the, the European Union or, or it's a coalition of nations that are going to come out of the sea and are going to make war against the Christian church. How many Caesars were there? How many Caesars? Well, there is a great question. Let's see. There was Julius Caesar. He was the first. Uh, Augustus, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius. Nero was number six, and then it all started falling apart. So Galba was the next one. 
Yeah, you had you had um, four then in quick succession, didn't you? Yes, they called it the year of the four, the of the four seasons. All in the year sixty nine. Like there was Nero died in sixty nine, then you had Galba, Otho, Vitilius, and Vespasian. So no, yeah, Nero. When did Nero die? Seventy. Ah, yeah, seventy. So Galba came in in sixty nine A.D. Is that right? No, no. So Nero, Nero just died. In died. Yeah. Right, right, right. So, sixty eight. Yeah. So so um, he he came in um, and. Um, he, he was there for part of 68 into 69. Just six and months, then, that's and right. And then you've got another three in, um, in 69. So, this, so, so what you'll find then is what you and I have understood is that this beast is actually the Roman Empire. That's 10. And, there's, and they've got the 10. And that 10th one was Vespasian who rallied like there was the year of the four he seasons resurrect, he resurrected the, the roman empire yeah yeah and started the flavian yep. dynasty um with with titus yep. yeah the two of them um made a resurrection he actually ruled vespasian ruled for 10 years um so it was it was a marvel and made the whole world worship uh the roman empire and pay homage to the roman empire in and the roman empire uh if you look at the feet of the statue which statue? Um, oh, let, let me just clarify Daniel, that. Yeah. Daniel statue. So Daniel chapter 2, we have Nebuchadnezzar has that statue. We talked about it last week. He had a dream of a big statue, head of gold, chest of silver. Uh, you know, and, and Daniel says these are four kingdoms, um, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans. Of course, the Romans were in, in his future. They're in our past. And, and what happens? Well, you've got, you've got the feet of iron clay. So that's the Roman Empire. And um, it was a divided empire. Um, and so the feet, when you come to the end of each foot, you've got toes, so you've got 10 toes. And um, that was indicating some division within the Roman Empire to such an extent that they actually divided it up into, into 10 areas. 10 yeah. Years. So Augustus did that. Yep. Tell me this, when exactly... Did Augustus divide the Roman Empire into ten provinces? Well, it was before Christ was born, uh, so it was in the. Um, but not long before he no, was born. No, no. So because he was reigning. Uh, yeah, Augustus was yeah, reigning yeah, when, when when Jesus Christ was born. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense because in the dream that Daniel that um, Nebuchadnezzar had, the rock cut out not by human hands, in other words, Jesus, comes into the world, hits it at its feet. At a time when, when uh, Julius Caesar had had gone and Augustus Caesar had divided the Roman Empire into ten provinces, that's when Jesus comes in. That makes sense. See, if the ten toes were two thousand years in their future, like now, if it was a coalition of nations now, and it, well, Jesus, that can't be right because Jesus came into the statue, uh, he came to the world during the Roman Empire. Uh, and that is obviously long since gone now. So, so the the beast out of the sea with the seven heads and the ten horns represents the Roman Empire, and and the sixth, the one like so he says in Revelation thirteen we just read it. There are five that are one that is. So we know that um, maybe we we got it wrong because a lot of a lot of commentaries say that. Revelation was written around 85, 90 AD. Mm -hmm. But if he's referring to Nero as the one well, that is... Some of them are saying it was written um, about 67 to 69 AD, which was yeah. just before the sacking of Jerusalem. And uh, it, That would it, make sense. Yeah. If, if Nero is the sixth, the sixth horn or the sixth head, um, then that would make sense. It, because it was a prophecy written to the Jews or the Jewish believers yeah. of the day. Um, so it's it's really historical for us. It was prophetic for them. So when it says ten horns, it's referring to those next four kings as well. So you've got the sixth, including Nero, and then you've got Galba, Otho, Vitilius, and Vespasian. And they lasted a few months each. Yeah, those ones. And then Vespasian, he yeah. got ten years, yeah. and, and that was the big revival. Um, so that actually makes a lot of sense when you think of it like that. Um, so I'm sorry, Barry Smith, but I think you uh, you might be getting it a little wrong. Hey, tell me this, because I know a lot of our listeners will probably have read the Timothy LaHaye books 
Left Behind. Left Behind. Left yes. Behind. They even made a movie about it. A few movies. I, I call them Christian horror movies. Yeah. People don't like that. It was, uh, Nicolas Cage was in one, Left Behind. And the theory was that, um, that Christians get zapped away but just before Jesus turns up. So three and a half years before Jesus or seven years before Jesus, depending on your theory, that Christians get vanished, you know, and Larry Norman wrote a song about it. Tim, Tim LaHaye based his book on the, uh, the concept out of Matthew 24, where two would be together, one taken and one left behind. Yeah. Um, and saying Matthew 24 was about the, uh, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. So um, he was saying one will be taken and one left behind. Only problem was, um, <clears throat> according to Tim LaHaye, the one that was taken was obviously raptured out. Was to, a Christian. To death. According to Matthew, it was exactly the opposite because uh, he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the coming of the Son of Man. Uh, and he said that they were marrying and giving in marriage. So they were the world. And they did not know until the flood came and took them away. So it actually took away the evil and the righteous. Mm, no one is right. left. Now, if, if that's a reasonable um, translation and interpretation of Scripture, then we would expect Scripture to say the same thing in other places as well. So think about the parable that Jesus told of the, um, of the wheat and the tares. And yeah. uh, yeah. Jesus said, no, you leave them grow together until the end of the age and the harvest is the end of the age. So yeah. when it comes to harvest, what did Jesus say to do? He said, go and firstly... Take out which the tears. The tears. Take the weeds Take out. Take the weeds yeah. out and throw them into the fire. Right. So they were mm. taken out, and what was left behind mm. was the good stuff. It was the good stuff. Sheep and the goats, exactly the same. Yeah, principle. yeah. And not to mention that um, you know the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, not a single Christian was not was one. killed. Not one, because they all remembered Jesus' prophecy. They all remembered. He said, "Oh, this will be it." In fact, one of the things in, in uh, Matthew 24, if you read it again, it says, in most versions, the, the, uh, it says, when you see the vultures gathering, you know. Now, I, I, uh, I'm, I can't speak Greek. I, I confess I'm not, no Greek theologian. But I did Google the word, and it turns out it's not vultures. The, the word is eagles, when you see the eagles gathering. And, of course, that was for anybody at the time, would be uh, a, a big red flag. This is Rome. The, the Roman standard had a big eagle on it. And uh, when you see the eagles surrounding you, you know, you know the, this yeah. is it. The end yeah. is near. Get out. And that's what they did. Um, it's, it, it probably bears mentioning that the reason why they wrote vultures, why would they do that? Why would they change that? Is because so many people in the evangelical world have been completely sucked into Darbyism. Uh, John Darby, uh, you know, he, he wrote this theory that all of these things are going to be in the future. And, uh, and he, you know, he, one of his greatest uh, fans was Schofield. And Scho Schofield, right? Yeah, Cyril and Schofield. C Cyril Schofield wrote the first all-in-one study Bible. And a whole lot of churches thought that was a good idea. It was particularly the churches that did were um, what we call the non-conformist churches. So that's us, yeah. Pentecostals, but it was Baptist Brethren, Church of Christ, that type of, uh, of evangelical type church, which are known as non-conformist. And um, unfortunately, I, I can say this, um, the theology of those churches at that time was fairly shallow. Um, well, especially the eschatology. The, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, the general theology was pretty poor. And for the man in the, in the pew to suddenly not only have a Bible <clears throat> in his own language, but to have some notes to tell you what the Bible was saying, yeah. that was absolutely amazing. And yeah. so it worked really, really, really well, in yeah. the, particularly in those circles. But if there was a problem, then everybody started believing that problem. And yep. one of them was that, um, you know, the, the standard thinking for 2,000 years had been that 
you know, the, what, the, what Jesus was, was referring to, what Revelation was referring to, was the sacking of Jerusalem. Uh, Jerusalem is the harlot, in, according to God, because they, they rejected Jesus. They, they continually, for thousands of years, had, had rejected God. He considered it like a harlot now. Um, the, the, the woman that sits on the harlot is Rome sitting on. So there's this, you know, Rome is controlling Jerusalem and it will be thrown into the sea. Even Jesus said, you know, that, you know, you throw this mountain into the sea, referring to that as well. So when they then had to translate the word eagle, they thought well, it must mean, must mean when the vultures are gathering. It's a type of eagle, I suppose, because, you know, it's in its all death and destruction. And they missed the whole point. Yeah. That, um, that the rest of the church for, th for 2,000 years almost. Uh, and, and still today, the, the uh, great majority of the church, yeah. we in the West, um, we are very much influenced by Darbyism uh, and what we call dispensational theology. Um, but the, the rest of the world is not. And um, anyone that comes from a reformed basis so um, there's a lot of Reformed yeah. churches, Lutherans and so forth. Uh, the Anglican church comes basically out yeah. of that. And modern day, um, the Baptist church is going back to its Reformed base. Um, and their eschatology is changing back to what yeah. it used to be. Eschatology, by the way, is just a fancy word meaning end times. Yeah, end times theology. Hey, listen, why don't we pick it up here next week? and talk about dispensationalism, another one of those big words. We'll talk about that. And, uh, and whether or not the second coming of Jesus is related to all of this. Like if, okay, so if, if the tribulation refers to the, the 70 AD sacking of Jerusalem, what about the second coming of Jesus? So well, you know, it's real. Yeah, he's it's coming. real. He's, he's coming. coming. Very so soon. We'll coming. be talking about that next week. So stay tuned. We look forward to seeing you again next, next week. week. God bless you.